the Madman. Welcome to the second to last review of the Voyage to the Sunken City cards revealed over the last few days. On April 5th, we're gonna get our final reveal of the 40 plus remaining cards. And we're also going to see the core set, which is going to be a really big deal because a lot of these cards can't be reevaluated without knowing what cards are in the core set, since the core set has a bunch of basic cards, which could be really important in a number of the decks archetypes that they're pushing here. Also exciting event coming up, April 7th, I've been invited to the Theorycraft stream and I have a really ambitious goal. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull it off, but I'm going to try to play 10 different decks all with the Voyage to the Sunken City theme. Anyways, let's start off by looking at Bottom Feeder for Druid. One mana, one three beast, death rattle, add a bottom feeder to the bottom of your deck with permanent plus two plus two. Bottom feeder naturally fits into the token druid, dredge, aquatic form, Asharan Gardens package, where you put the sunken gardens uh, and the bottom feeder onto the bottom of your deck, you dredge them up with aquatic form, you naturally have a pretty focused token deck anyways. Uh, bottom feeder is an efficient one mana, one three, Looks like it'll be a great fit in that deck. For Demon Hunter, you got a card that just might be strong enough to put into every single Demon Hunter deck out there. It's Glaive Shark. Four mana, four, three, Bellacry. If your hero attack this turn, deal two damage to all enemies with a beast. It's a Consecration that comes with a free four, three. Wow. <laughs> Dang. Great in mid-range control. Uh, you could even see aggro decks running it, just because it's kind of like Life Drinker, which was a 4-mana 3-3, three, three, deal 3 directly to the face. This is a 4-mana four 4-3, four, which deals 2 directly to the face, but also deals a bunch of damage to enemy minions. It's like, wow. Okay. I guess they needed a counterbalance to this Demon Hunter card. Abyssal Deaths, 4-mana Shadow Spell. Draw your two lowest cost minions. Four mana draw two, huh? But, I mean, it's better than draw two. Let's be fair, let's be fair. You get to tutor for the two specific cards that are the lowest cost in your deck, uh, allowing you to potentially build like a combo deck or a big deck with Vandar on the bottom, you know, of your mana cost cards, perhaps. But let's be real, no one's ever gonna play this card. More like abysmal depths. <laughs> Hunter has Naga's Pride, 3 mana, summon 2, 2-2 two, two Lionfish. If you played a Naga while holding this, give them plus 1, plus 1. Upside of this card is you could pay 3 mana to summon 2, 3-3 three, three beasts. Downside is in order to do that, you need to be playing Naga in your Hunter deck. There's Quest Hunter, uh, which looks like Nagas could fit, uh, fit into Quest Hunter. Would Quest Hunter want a 3 mana spell that summoned... Two three threes. I mean, that is pretty efficient. So maybe I could see it, but it's one of those. If there's a Naga Hunter deck, which there may or may not be, maybe it's Face Hunter, would they even run a three mana uh, summon two three threes if you played a Naga before the Naga's Pride? That's kind of specific. It's kind of tough. Mage gets Trench Surveyor. Two mana, three two. Battle Cry, Dredge. If it's a mech, draw it. This card is a mech. Yeah, this is really hard-pushing mech mage. There are already a decent number of cards that are basically like really high on the efficiency scale for mage, for mech mage in particular. Asharan Sweeper, Mecha Shark, and the legendary for, uh, for the mage is the Colossal Gaia the Tectonic card. And of course, this card is amazing in getting the Sunken Sweeper off the bottom of your deck. But the big caveat is, well, are there going to be enough mechs to allow Mech Mage and Mech Paladin? That is going to depend on the core set. Uh, my personal feelings on this is Snow Chugger is almost guaranteed to be a shoe in for the core set. It's gotta be, right? It's a Mage Mech card. It never seemed too unfair. But yes, this is a really, really strong card. It's 2 mana, 3, 2 drawing card, potentially, if you manage to dredge up a mech. And if you don't dredge up a mech, then it's kind of like the Sightless Watcher from Demon Hunter, where you pay 2 mana for your 3, 2, and then you put a good card on the top of your deck. Spite Lash Siren is a really interesting mage Naga. 4 mana, 2, 5, Naga. After you play a Naga, refresh 2 mana crystals, then switch to Spell. Well, you always gotta watch out for cards that refund you mana, and 
Spital Ash Siren looks like it is the card that hard pushes a Naga Spell Mage deck. The amount of mana you could save in a turn where you're like going off with the Siren could be gigantic. Play a Naga with the Siren, refresh two mana crystals, play a spell, sometimes it'll cost less than two, refresh your mana crystals, play a Naga, play a spell, play a Naga, play a spell. Maybe sometimes your spells draw more spells, maybe sometimes your Nagas draw more spells, and then whoop, 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 whoop. And don't even get me started, maybe the Siren could stick on turn four, it's got five health. Maybe the Siren sticks one turn after you get off your mega turn. Cool little uh, card could be defining of whatever deck ends up being the mage version of spells and nagas. Shaman gets Glug the Gulper. This is the final colossal minion that was unrevealed up until now. Glug the Gulper, seven mana, three, five beast, colossal plus three. After a friendly minion dies, gain its original stats. Glug's tail, there comes in three tail pieces, each of which has taunt and each of which is a two, two. If you add the stats all up together, this is a 7 mana 9 11. If your opponent has to go through the taunts first, uh, that 6 6 in stats gets added to Glug. So 15 17. That's a lot of stats. Plus, it's not just the tails that add stats to Glug, it's a friendly minion. So Glug the Gulper, perhaps, is just so efficient that you put him into any deck that actually runs minions. Sure, sometimes they answer the huge card with a spell, or sometimes they have AoE, but Glug the Gulper really forces your opponent to have like a pretty specific answer. Otherwise, it's going to at least be a two for one against the opponent, or a really huge headache. That's a lot of stats, okay? Over in Warlock Land, got six mana for a shadow spell, Abyssal Wave. Deal four damage to all minions, give your opponent an Abyssal Curse. Four damage to all minions for six is a bit steep, Maybe I'd pay five for it. So this Abyssal Curse card better be really good. At the start of your turn, take one damage. Each curse is worse than the last. Wait, how's that possible? This card is already so bad. How can anything be worse? Okay, so the way it works is uh, each time you cast a spell that gives your opponent a curse, it'll increment the curse damage by one more. So the second time you cast Abyssal Wave, the opponent will get an Abyssal Curse that at the start of your turn, take two damage. And it lasts two turns. However, if your opponent feels like spending two mana, they can spend two mana to uh, negate the second version of the curse. Now, obviously, it's too early to judge this card before we see all the other Abyssal Curse cards. Fortunately, we see another Abyssal Curse card. Zakul! Five mana, six, five. Your Abyssal Curses heal you for the damage they deal. Battlecry, give your opponent an Abyssal Curse. So Zakul is the third copy of Abyssal Curse that you could give your opponent for a maximum of 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 damage, 12 max damage if you manage to cast your Zakul on your Abyssal Waves, uh, and that's if your opponent didn't feel like spending any mana on the Abyssal Curses. Obviously, we're going to have at least one more Abyssal Curse card. Uh, if we do, then it could go up to 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 as well. Perhaps there's going to be another Abyssal Curse card on top of that. But at this point, I am already ready to judge that there's no chance that this will work. Because the Zakul card is already so bad and the Abyssal Wave card is so bad. It's like those other two cards, they can't possibly be that good that you would feel compelled to run Zakul or Abyssal Wave. Furthermore, Zakul and Abyssal Wave are both control cards, and Control Warlock doesn't seem to want to deal damage directly to the opponent's face, like that seems pointless. There is no way that this will ever be a good deck. This is so bad! My god! <laughs> now before you despair, there must be some reason why they made these cards so bad, Abyssal Wave and Zakul. It is an implication that the next card or cards with the Abyssal Curse mechanic will be amazing, so watch out for those. Now you got Chum Bucket for Warlock, 2 mana, give all Murlocs in your hand plus 1 plus 1, repeat for each Murloc you control. Really cool, pushing the uh, Murloc Warlock theme. If you have two Murlocs on the board, you're buffing your entire hand of Murlocs for plus three, plus three. That's a lot. And Warlock is the class that has the natural draw a card hero power, so this could work. Uh, as usual, this is one of those, it depends on how many Murlocs are going to be revealed in the core set. I'm not entirely sure whether or not Chum Bucket is run in Murloc Warlock. 
could definitely be a strong option, especially if the Murloc Warlock deck is more mid-range or value-oriented, and it becomes like a hand-buff Murloc Warlock deck. Kind of cool idea. Any Storm Coil, 5 mana 4-4, four, four, Battlecry, choose a friendly mech, summon a copy of it with Rush, Wind Fury, and Divine Shield. There's two mech themes being pushed here, Mech Mage, Mech Paladin. Suffice it to say, you will consider running any Storm Coil in Mech Mage or Mech Paladin. Very efficient card if you manage to hit a mech with it. Could be especially good in the decks that plan to go later because she is at her best when you play a mech and then you play any and then target that mech, especially if it's a bigger mech. So maybe you're looking to like go for the four or five mana mech. But again, with that though, uh, that's such a large mana cost requirement that it's possible that the mech decks won't even run any, especially if they're the faster tempo uh, variants. Might just be too slow. We got a cool tech card, Smothering Starfish, three mana, two, four beast with battle cry, silence all other minions. Did you ever think mass dispel was good? Eh, I don't know about that. But now you have three mana, uh, one mana discount, mana mass dispel, and you it comes with a free two four. And it's not just priest only. It is substantially better owl. Sometimes you get a two for one because you silence two important minions instead of owl's one, and it's two four instead of a two one. Consider this a really strong tech card if there's enough stuff that's annoying out there then go smother it with your starfish. And finally, last, but certainly not least, I was hiding this one until the end. School Teacher, 4 mana, 5, 4, Naga. Battlecry, add a 1, 1, Nogaling to your hand. Discover a spell that costs 3 or less to teach it. Just to make sure to be clear, when you play the Nogaling, you can target the spell that has been taught. So it's a 4 mana, 5, 4, Battlecry, like, add a super lackey to your hand. Plus, we're in the set where spells care about you playing Naga, and Naga wants you to have spells. This just goes into 100% of all decks that run Nagas and spells, and this card is good enough to potentially be filler for almost every single deck archetype out there. Like, that's how strong this is. Now, not every single deck will end up playing it, but I think it's in consideration for every single deck in the game. So there you have it, Voyage to the Sunken City. It's going to be a really exciting time. Welcome to the new meta. A lot of exciting things happening in Hearthstone.